guys, this is going to be our first project this semester and it's very doable. And so this is what we're going to call, hmm, I don't know, in a galaxy far, far away. I don't know. Sounds good to me. Okay, let's get started. So let me show you some things before we get started. This is an example of using too much salt. So you saw the neat texture on the one I just showed you, a finished one, but this one is too much salt. So all you're going to need is a pinch. Like this is way too much. You're gonna need a pinch, literally a pinch of salt that you're going to just place kind of close. You're gonna place it on. So as you can see, it lost, it's a cool effect, but it's not what we want. It's lost a lot of definition um, and the edge. This is one that's an example of being too dark. The effects of the salt are really cool, but once you put the stars on it that we're gonna put on last, hmm, second to last, <laughs> um, it just, it lo it'll lose its definition. So let's get started. What we're going to do first is we're going to take the piece of paper in front of you that is eight and a half by 11. And the purpose for that is because we're going to trace just the edge so that if you want to cut that off later and put it in a protective sleeve like this, you can get them at Staples, Costco, any office supply place, you'll be able to slide your artwork right into here. All seven projects that we're going to be, that one hasn't been cut yet. All seven projects that we're going to be doing, you can keep them in here. And then you'll have a portfolio to show later. So, then after you've traced the paper, you're going to take your pencil, you're gonna lightly trace around the plate or whatever circular object I have provided for you. And then, let me put the salt away. We're going to take the largest brush you have in front of you, which is a 12. The set that you have is a set of four brushes. The only brush you won't have that we'll be using is a fan brush, and we're going to use this to be um, flicking on the stars. So let's start with, put it in the wrong one. Oh, by the way, did I show you this? This is the wash, this is the rinse. So you're gonna wash your brush here and rinse it here. I go left to right, I read left to right, it reminds me to go clockwise. But what we're gonna do first is we're going to apply some water in a thick brush stroke. See how I'm kind of laying the brush down? Oh, there's salt on here. <sighs> Not anymore. And we're going to get really close to the edge, but not on the edge. And the reason for that is because we want the black paint to be the focus. We want it to have a nice, sharp, clean edge. It'll make for a much nicer um, project outcome. Okay, so take some black, load it on your brush, twist it so it's got a nice point to it. And then you're going to just follow along. Did you see how cool that was? That's why we have the water. It keeps a wet edge. So we're gonna follow along and just hit or just go over the pencil. So if you can see, I skipped right there. Just go back, trace over it again. Now down here, we don't want it so, so black. I'm kind of nervous about even, let's start up here. And the reason why is that last quarter of the pie is going to be highlighted and where we're going to be painting our trees. So we don't want it really dark down there. It could have the look of like, oh, I don't know. The sun has already set. Do you see how that is not doing what it's supposed to be doing. Okay, so I didn't make mine wet enough, but the advantage of this is, I'm gonna get a little blue in here. The advantage is now, 
I can kind of put some color in here where we want our trees and we can push some of that black out. We just don't need it that dark right there, but we do need it dark here. Oops, I went outside. That's okay. Just take some more paint, fill that in. It's all gonna change once we add the salt and the stars anyway. Always keep your brush going in this direction, not this direction, because you don't wanna fray those bristles. We always wanna keep the edge wet. So now at this point, what we're going to do is I'm just gonna get a, and wash my brush. I've got a little bit of water on here and I'm going to re, go along there a little bit, grab a little pink. Kind of want this. We're gonna keep this section in here. Don't draw a line like I just did, just for <laughs> teaching purposes. Oh dear. I'm just showing you what section we're gonna keep, kind of light, more like that color. Okay, we're gonna fill this in with water. Get rid of that hard edge. And now what we're going to do is we're going to start dropping in some color. So your blue is pretty wet ahead of time. Just see how you're just gonna be kind of sloppy about it. Then you can get some pink. You don't even have to rinse. Put some pink in there. Now, because you don't want a bunch of hard edges and just kind of a painting that looks on purpose, It'd be good to take some color, mix it up, get some purple. You don't even have to use all the pink. Use the pink for a variety of color, but you don't have to use the pink um, as pink. You can add some water, kind of soften that up. Now I've added some purple and I'm gonna go along this edge because I'm watching that black pull away. Oh dear. And then I went outside the line. No worries. We'll just go back over it again. <laughs> and then we'll just kind of blop it because we want some of that darkness to come out here. I'm getting a puddle in here. That's not good. You don't want a puddle because what's going to happen is it won't dry in time to finish this project. So you want to kind of touch and blop it out. Blop it towards the center a little. I'm um, getting dark in here. Okay, so I'm going to rinse my brush tap off the extra water and I'm going to add just the clean water in here. Something else you can do that I didn't, I haven't shown you. If it's too, too wet, now this is not the main part of the project, but if it's too, too wet and you just can't get it to sop up, you could move that paint around and away from the edges a little bit, but if you'll see what happened here, that's too much, you know? So I'm gonna take that off. That actually looks really good to me, I like that. So I've still got a nice clean edge. I actually don't want that much pink. Be messy about it because so cool when you're done. We're going to put two techniques over this. I did intend on, I just interrupted myself, I did intend on keeping this a little drier in here or um, what am I trying to say? Lighter? So I did not keep mine as light as I wanted. I am swiping now because I'm trying to get some of that off. Okay. So let's call that finished. That's finished. And then we're going to get a pinch of salt, just a pinch, one pinch. 
and you're going to put it around one pinch, one pinch. That's it. And you're going to just sprinkle it around. I actually see a little bit of, I wonder if there's any wetness in that blue, because isn't that blue cool? It just kind of appeared out of nowhere. Well, it's all going to appear out of nowhere. You'll just, oh, it's amazing how much this will change. So what I'm going to do is, I've timed this already. And, oops, do you see those splotches? Oh, dear. With a very, very clean brush, you can try and get light-colored paint off. Dab it. That won't ever all the way come off. But anyway, you can dab it. Now I'm gonna come back and show you what the starburst effect looks like with the one I did earlier, which by the way, is too dark. But it's ready to show you the next step. So pretend that's the one I just did <laughs> and the salt is dry. You're going to push the salt from the outside in and the reason why is in case you're wrong and it's not dry, you won't smear the paint outside. Now sometimes if your paint's really wet, it's gonna stick and puddle. Then you're just going to knock it off. Knock it off. And then make sure the last pieces are off. Ta-da, that's off. Okay, so I have cleaned my larger brush brought it to a point to dry. Now, oh no, we don't do the trees yet. Oh my gosh, I have done that so many times. We're gonna take Bleed Proof White. This is how we're going to do the stars. We're gonna take that, find that plate first of all. Take that plate, and I have no way of putting this on my, okay, we're gonna go like this and sneak it in there. <laughs> That's how we're gonna do it unless I come up with a better idea. And then you're going to get your dry, skinny brush. Okay, that didn't work. I need more paint. So it does need to be on the wet side. The problem is this paint tends to, um, whoa, that works better, whoa! It's flicking up in the air. Go hit down down don't go flick just go down 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 can you see those tiny little stars happening and be careful you don't go so close that you accidentally hit it right on there not sure how we're going to disperse this as a class because i only have one jar it's ten dollars a jar oops it is flicking all over oh my it's flicking all over the place. The closer you get, the bigger your stars are. I think I have to make it a little more liquidy because it is way too bouncy and thick. Oh, I got like a shooting star. Now the other thing you can do is maybe take your tips and, nope, that tip was not round. Take the tips. If there's not a lot of people waiting for this, that is. And put a little bit, see if you can put bigger um, stars out there just to give it a little more dimension. This is all dependent on how much time we have. That one I put in that circle, is that cool? Like a little, like it's making a star. Okay, let's call that enough. I shouldn't, I shouldn't have put so many stars down here because, not that I had that much control over it, but because um, that's where we're gonna put our trees. We have to work with this quickly. I wish you could see the mess I've made. We have to work with that quickly because it'll dry on the brush. And that's not a good thing rinse that out okay let's go ahead 
put the lid, oh my, put the lid on our bleed proof white. And let's do some trees. Did we practice the trees? I don't think we practiced the trees. So get some paint on your brush. I'm gonna practice a tree with you because we haven't. So, oh yes, I was going to show you how to do this with a large brush because it's so much easier to see on camera if it's large. So pretend this is my tiny little brush, your tiny little brush. You're gonna go see the circle here. You're gonna go from the line, not in the middle, so don't go here. You wanna stay this way and not here. You wanna stay this way. You're gonna keep your trees here. But for teaching's sake, let me show you. You're gonna draw a straight line and then you're gonna zigzag. Keep your brush sideways and you're just gonna make dabs and then increase the size, increase the size. All of a sudden I have an accent. Increase the size as you go down. You can leave it like this. I prefer not to see that exact stump. So I like to fill at least the center in so you don't see that. And then I fill part of the outside in. And then I keep it as open as I want. I like it open. This one's a little airier. This one's a little chunkier. So you're gonna do that exact same step. Dash, dash, like in a Z. Right? And that's your tree. So you're just gonna, that's really cool. Anybody know Bob Ross? Well, I don't think you guys know Bob Ross. Do you know of Bob Ross? He makes these little dashy kind of trees too. Okay. That's it. So we're gonna take that idea after I rinse my brush and with your black paint not in the center, scoot over you're going to draw one tree stump. Ooh, that's nice. Two, I'm actually gonna do mine like this and then come down again. You can do it however you want. And now I'm gonna do my, my zigzag. Dash, 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 dash. And all of a sudden, it's a tree. And you can make them a little more empty when you first start out because you can always add more. It's hard to know how they're gonna turn out when you first start doing it. I'm covering up that white before it makes a gray tree. And really you're just giving the illusion that there's a tree. This one's a little fluffier. Let's see how you can see the trunk. I'm going to go in there and disguise it. Okay. So as soon as you get the hang of that, this, or think you want to try, go for it. Put about five to seven trees anymore and it's just going to look a little too clustery. You could even just put three if you want. Now see, you can see the stars right here. Trees don't have stars on them. It could be snow, but trees don't have stars on them. This bleed proof stuff is really good. So it really, it actually shows really well. Now, if, you're, if your trees start disappearing down here because maybe like me, you made yours too dark, along the edge, go ahead and put another coat. But that's it. That's your project. So, where's mine? Oh, I put it somewhere to dry. I think I just put a bunch of stuff on top of it as I was teaching. I sure did. Which one do you think it was? Was it this one? It sure was, and I got, see how far my water splatted? I splatted way over there, but now you can see what the starburst did. 
what this, the um, salt did. So when this is dry, I'll take the salt off and I will go ahead and <laughs> fix that. But this is the one I did this too dark. It's actually kind of more theatrical, isn't it? I like it. Okay, go for it.